peace, all praise and glory to the mighty most high, our creator, who is one God. Blessings to the children that serve one God. The bloodline, the red blood of those that serve the spiritual creator. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the watchers, which all come from the book of Enoch. Which goes into deep, deeper understanding about the spiritual side. Side of creation. Okay, all of our lives we've been taught the, about angels and we haven't really been taught the true concept of what an angel is, a true angel. The watchers here were a higher archy. All right, which is an air. Okay? <clears throat> a higher archy to God. God's closest angels. So what does all this mean when I talk about God's closest angels? Well, first let me say that since I've fallen into the truth here, and the, and the Spirit has moved upon me, that something happened, and I've really been talking about something that I really know nothing about, the Creator at, at that time. I mean, talking about the stories of the Bible, uh, talking about a theology, my own dialogue, my own understanding of what, what's being said in the Bible, going to the Spirit of God for discernment, crying out seriously with a broken heart and a true desire to know this truth. So, he hasn't really edified me with a bunch of corresponding comments in the section. But how he does edify me is by me searching for more information because a lot of times when I search for information I come across something that I've said that was just something that I was sharing from the heart from the spirit because I feel honestly that with the spirit on you that you're guided things are said things are come from you as a conduit for for the creator so my edification comes from like videos that I'm going to make today about the Watchers. I really don't know a lot about the Watchers. I really don't know a lot about the Book of Enoch, but I'm in the middle of learning it. And I'm starting to understand that the Book of Enoch, as well as the Book of Revelations, are probably two books that were before Genesis. Okay, you have the Book of Enoch... And then Revelations. And then you have Genesis. And Genesis is the one to be peculiar about. You know why? Because Genesis, I've taught in many in my lessons, are Jen. This book is written from Jen Tile in flesh okay so the watchers are the hierarchy of angels that existed all right everything is going in heaven there is no material world as of right now there's just a spiritual side of creation that's going on okay it's not until later that centropy comes into effect and the electrification of this materialized world takes place. So in the meantime, the watchers hear that God, so God later, then he creates another race, all right? He creates a Gentile race of people, okay? The creator does. He creates this Gentile race, which is the beast, Okay, they're the United Nations.
Okay? This is Genesis here, 1, 25, which God creates the beast. All right? And then he creates one. This here beast that's created in Genesis 1, 25, it is the first beast. Okay, and then this beast here, later, in Genesis 1, 26, and 27, this one here is the second beast, which ties in to Revelations. Thirteen, eighteen, which says the second beast was permitted. Now this is big for me because like I said, I stumble across stuff and then boom, all of a sudden it Ding, it rings a bell off in my head. So now in Revelations 13, 18, a book that I'm telling you happened before Genesis because you have the war in heaven that takes place, okay? Because Enoch was sent into heaven. He got to see things. He went to hell, okay? Now, the watchers, the hierarchy angels... Raphael, San Riguel, uh, Michael, okay, and many other names of these angels, okay, and an angel is an angelos. Okay, it's uh, Numbers 32 in the Strong's Concordance. Concordance. Okay, 32 in the Strong Concordance is by implication. A priest <clears throat> so now you know that angels are tied in with priests bishops deacons clerics clergies and many other names for the cloth cardinals popes, and so on. These are all angels. So that day when Mary came into the tomb and she looked into the tomb and she saw two angels, one at the foot and one at the head, okay, she saw two priests, she saw two bishops, she saw two deacons. This plane of existence, his mind screwed you into believing that angels have wings. You got to understand that these watchers here that were created, they lived three to five hundred years. Okay? And then what you had, the watchers that were supposed to be watching the beast of the field, each according to their kind, because the children of God, the Israelite, hasn't been created yet. Okay? The Israelite is the last man, Adam. There's two Adams. I'm trying to teach people in this plane of existence that you have two Adams. This is confirmed in 1 Corinthians. Excuse 
excuse me, 1 Corinthians 15.45, and it says, the first man, Adam. became a living being. The last man, Adam, a life-giving spirit. This one here that's created a spirit is a heavenly body. Okay, a spiritual being like the watchers. Okay, but once you are born into this plane of existence and you're born into the uh, flesh, you have to wake up. So you have the watchers here, which fell from grace. They came down. All right, the watchers here started laying down with the Gentile could also be the humans the Israelites as well and the watchers here are all these higher angels that made a pact 200 angels They made a pact with one another. One angel of all was afraid that he would take the fall. So they made a pact. Well, what did they make a pact to do? They taught the beasts, which is a host system. The beast, us, okay? Parable in the Bible. Uh, Psalms, I think it is, 115. Psalms 115. I think it's four. I'm not really sure, though. I'm pretty sure it's 115, though. And it says, Those that make them are just like them. And those that trust them, those that trust them, pretty sure it's Psalms 115, for I said, but their idols are silver and gold made by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot hear. They have ears but cannot see, noses but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, feet but cannot walk. Nor can they utter a sound with their throats. Those that make them will be like them. And so will those who trust in them. Those that make them are just like them. And so... And so, that's what I was wrong. And so, are those that trust them. I was off at Psalms 8. I'll remember that for next time. Psalms 115.8. This is why I write the stuff on the board. Because it brings, it brings, it helps me to re retain the information. I really retain the information you know, like twice as fast writing stuff down like this. I've really put a lot of material over the last three years to uh, memory. Okay, so the first man, Adam, became a living being. Okay, that's... And then there's the last man, Adam. The last man, Adam, a life-given spirit, which is a heavenly body. Okay. This one here is the life-giving spirit. Right here. The heavenly body is the life-giving spirit. The second man, Adam. This is why it says in the Bible, man, that the, uh, 
those that are first shall be last. Okay? The Gentile. We are first. We were created here a long time ago. Okay? Now, as I understand it, the Hebrew man is the one that has been here for uh, only six or 7,000 years. The Gentile and the Watchers and another race, a spiritual race, and all that already existed. When I talk about the Gentile race, the Gentile race are ghosts. You understand? And we know on this channel here that Jesus gave up the ghost. Okay? That's Mark. 1537. Why do you always go over the same parables over and over and over and over? Because it needs to be the simp it needs to be this simple. Okay? It needs to be slow. Okay? So it so it absorbs. You need to you need to hear it a few times over and over and over for it to start to absorb into what's being said. Because Mark, Jesus gave up the ghost, and the ghost equals the spirit of the dead. So once these wa these watchers fell from heaven, and they they really fell from heaven. You understand? They'll never be back into the kingdom of heaven. Okay, and these watchers are the ones that that took for themselves. Wives, if uh, uh, correct me on this, brother ET, Torah teacher. If I'm wrong on this, if you're if you know have a lot of knowledge about the book of Enoch, so these are angels, God's hierarchy angels, closest angels to God that fell from God, created a pack against God, and then they. They wanted to use our host bodies. The watchers. Okay? Because these watchers, they know what's good and evil. You see? They were, they were worshipers of the Most High, and then they stopped. They started teaching us things like war, fornication, they taught us how to lie, cheat, steal, commit adultery. Okay? You got to understand that there's an entire circle, a band. These angels were a band. Okay? And they all together each have taught us certain things. Some angels like fornicating. Some angels like little kids. Some angels like war. Some angels like to kill. Some angels were good. This is where you come into Elohim. Elohim are both good and evil. It has to be good and evil. Elohim has to be good and evil because this one here is used of the Supreme Creator. Elohim is plural of Eloa. Well, plural. What does plural mean? It means many. Man. Elohim is man that is used from, excuse me again, I just got done eating, from uh, the self existing spirit. 
Now, not just any spirit, but the spirit of truth. Okay? You got to understand that this is the most crucial thing between you and the Creator's connection. When you pray, you must pray to the spirit of truth. The Creator requires us. God is spirit. And those that worship him must do so in spirit and truth. See? Spirit and truth. The Creator requires us to worship in truth. You got to seek the spiritual truth. You got to understand that there's two doors. I gave this metaphor the other day. Okay, this is duality. One door is the door of life. One is the door of death. An angel stands in front of each door. One is the door of life. The other is the door of death. Or the, One is the one that always lies. The other always tells the truth. You can only ask one question. What one question can you ask one of these angels to find the door of life? Okay? That's what it is. That's what all of this is. This is this Bible has become a book of riddles. Let's see, a book of riddles. Hmm, Proverbs. Let's get to Proverbs. It's a book of riddles. I tell everybody this. I'm still trying to learn this and put it to memory. But I, it's like, it's so, some, some parables are so easy to remember. They're just like, bam, I read it one time and it's like, it's stuck. It's there. I got it. And then others, well, I try, I'm trying to take on seven of these parables, but still the same. What I'm getting to here is the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight. So when we, go, when we talk about gaining wisdom and instruction, right away, the only thing that comes to me is Revelation 13, 18. Okay? Because this parable here directly speaks about wisdom and insight. Okay? What I teach, what's happened, whatever happened, whatever the Spirit did, whatever He came upon me, all of a sudden, all this stuff that I'm speaking about was guided by His insight. I'm simply a conduit today right here, right now. Am I going to... Going to the fire, it's quite possible that I am. Do I stand a better chance than I ever have to get out of the fire? I absolutely do stand a much better chance today. I have people that, that are praying for me. I have people that care today. Real people. Living people. The rest of the world is all dead. So like I said... Revelation 13, 18 talks about wisdom, insight, a beast, and a man. And the number is 666. Revelations, here's a call for wisdom. Let the one with insight calculate the number of the beast, for it's the number of man, and his number is 666. All right? And then three, this here, this beast. So you have a beast and a man. The beast is the first beast. The man is the second beast beast what up pops 
Right on. I'm in the middle. You want to say hi to America? Hello, everybody. Come on. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I just had a fine hamburger. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye. Second beast. So this man here that's created, who is it? What's all this about, man? It's about the sixth day of creation, right? So the second beast. She talks about Revelation 13, 18. Or 13, 15. So when I read that, that the second beast was given, per, permitted to breathe into the image of the first beast, so that those that didn't worship him would be killed. Might have missed a little bit of that. So now we're talking about a first beast, 125 Genesis, second beast, 126, 27 Genesis, 25, 26, and 27 come to 78, which equals 15, which equals 6. Okay? Now, for receiving instruction in a prudent behavior, for gaining wisdom and instruction. So we need wisdom, insight, and instruction. Okay? Here's the thing. The watchers that I was talking about right here that we're supposed to watch, they came into the daughters of men and then they turned us into slaves. Okay? These are, th you got to understand something, folks. You got to stop thinking fleshly and understand that something spiritual. From both right, from this realm, from this realm that we can't see is what controls us. Alright? Something outside of this plane of existence, a parasite of something. Something that was given power. You understand? The, first, the second beast was permitted to give into the give breath to the image of the first beast. The first beast here are all idols. You know? Simon Cowell. On what? On America's Got Talent. Okay, what do you also have? You have American Idol. How much in your face does it have to be that the second man here created in Genesis 126 mankind is an idol. The man created on the sixth day of creation is created in an image and the biblical definition for image in the Bible is an idol. So the man that's created on the sixth day of creation is an idol and it takes wisdom and people to listen to the instruction for receiving instruction in a prudent behavior you see when I hit my knees and the creator he put it on me I received that instruction in a prudent behavior I didn't turn from it I was in such disarray I was so disorganized my mind was scrambled and I seriously had a lot of demons and stuff that were on me when the Creator came on me, everything fled, and I couldn't get up off the ground, literally. I couldn't leave the ground. I was just face down, man, in just complete shame. Because when the Spirit moves on you, you got to understand, He allows you to see your shame. Okay, so you have America's Got Talent, Simon Cowell, who's another one, Heidi Klum, right? Howie Mandel. Okay, who do they have? That big titty girl, what's her name now? Uh, Veragus or something like that. I don't know, the Latino woman. You can't stand that woman. Can't stand any of them. I can't stand any of them in Hollywood. You know why? Because they've all sold their souls, folks. 
They're a complete distraction. Those people are all ghosts. They're all dead. They're all phantoms. They're all idols. Okay? You idolize these people. Joe Rogan. The new one out now is Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson. He's become a shill. I used to listen to him. Everybody that I used to listen to that I had great respect for are all shills to me now, man. You know, uh, people that are that are good that you could listen to is Jordan Max Maxwell. He has a lot of good information about this system that we live in. Uh, Legends of History. This guy here talks about the Book of Enoch. Very detailed. Okay, he knows a hell of a lot more about the book than I do. Okay, I'm just coming into bits and pieces of this. I'm taking on this information and it's starting to make sense to me. Now, the, 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 the second beast and the first beast. That the first beast is created in 125 and the second beast is created in 26, 27. Okay, in an image, in an image, an idol. And all of these here have made themselves idols, folks. Okay, they're idols for worship. For the right price, you can have Heidi Klum on her back. All you got to do is have the money for it. Her slave masters, anytime they want Heidi Klum on her back, she's got to get on her back. When you're in that business, you got to get on your back. You got to suck seed. That's right. You heard me. What's that? Suck seed? Yeah. You got to suck somebody's seed to success, to be successful. You don't get to be a rock star, a Hollywood star, a general who wears stars, porn stars, or any of that unless you sell your soul. You understand that? You have a soul inside of your flesh. And the watchers are the ones who've led us astray by not following God's commandments. In Hollywood, you succeed to be successful. Okay? That's not just anybody. That's everybody. Okay? Someone doesn't come into Hollywood. I tell you straight off the bat, man. Straight off the bat, man. Before you even get into Hollywood, you got people wanting you to take your clothes off, take pictures of you, and send them in to their uh, agents and they'll they'll speak a spiel to you the whole freaking works man and and when I was a kid growing up and I was around the military bases there's nothing but gay people around those bases man men target the young recruits coming out of the military and stuff it's polluted Long Beach Newport Beach all these beaches along the side San Pedro Beach man all of them those that are close to the military installation and bases are, are a haven for queers, LBGT Q&As. That's where they hang out, man. They do. So all of these here are your idols that are on American Idol. They're all going to burn. They're all in it together, folks. Do you understand that the World Health Organization, the WHO, okay, NASA, these are all corporations they're all government corporations you understand these are all idiot corporations they're all liars okay why do you think they call the CIA and the FBI spooks Because they're ghosts. You guys here are under a ghost. Whoop! Screwed that one up. <clears throat> a ghost spell, which is the gospel. The gospel of what? Christ crucified. 
You worship Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you are going to be crucified. You're going to go straight to hell. Let me ask you a question. That man, Jesus is... It's, I, was, I brought this up the other day. I shit you not. I just I was just brought it up. And I sat down on the television after completing my thing. And I went to the shorts. And there's a short right in my face about the very parable that I just... I just got done talking about, which was this one here, that Jesus says to the man on the cross, Surely you will be with me this day in paradise. Jesus told that repentant thief That he would surely be with me this day in paradise. Here's the kicker. As the Bible tells us. Jesus. Went to hell. So then Jesus. Lied. To that man. Because you have paradise. Paradise. In the word, you have dice, as into slice, and dice, paradise. Jesus lied and told him that day, surely you will be with me this day in paradise. But Jesus went to hell with all the sins of the world. Well, hold on. If Jesus went to hell with all the sins of the world, all of them took every stinking sin on this plane to hell with him, why is there still sin? Come on, ask some questions. So Jesus went to hell and he was there for three days. As we've been told before he rise. R listen to the word magic though, man. Jesus is the first begotten son raised from the dead. Supposedly he's raised from hell. Well, what did he do with that guy? On, what did he do with that guy on the uh, cross? Did he lie? He said he'd be with them that day in paradise. How could that guy would be with Jesus that day in paradise if Jesus was hell? Because I make the argument that hell is paradise. To Jesus. Okay? Hell is paradise to Jesus. So when Jesus told that repentant thief on the cross that he would be with him that day in paradise, he was talking about the eternal fire. Where else could he be with him? If he said he's going to be with them that day. Okay? What do you say? Hey, check it out, man. I'll leave your I'll leave your flesh suit hanging up on the cross here. I'll come back by when I'm when I'm all free of sin, and I'll bring you to the kingdom of heaven with me. None of it makes sense. That man, the repentant thief, went to hell that day. It's that simple. All right, folks. I think that's a good enough. Uh, remember the watchers, okay? The watchers. The Gentile, then human, and then human and Gentile, which are blue bloods, red blood, human are living, 
Gentile or the dead. Every single Gentile on the face of this earth that hasn't repented to the Creator, the Spirit of God, the living Spirit, the truth, will be left with the liar. Okay, once you realize that you are a creation of the Most High, and you, your judgment is to be separated f from your Creator for eternity, that alone would be miserable. For Him to reveal Himself to you and then just cast you to the side like the worm that you are. See, everybody, everybody tells you that Jesus is love. Love, Jesus is love. He just loves everybody. Doesn't matter. I'll take whoever you are. I take the misfits. I take the rapists. I take the murderers. I take killers. I take pedophiles. I take priests that sodomize children. I take corrupted officials. I take those that rape women on the streets and prostitution and the Johns. I'll take all of you, man. Just profess my name, and when judgment comes, I'll stand as your mediator between you and the Creator, and I got your back, man. Don't you worry, because I, I took all your sins. Yeah, he took all of our sins. That's why sin's still in the world, huh? Yeah. He died on the cross so that we could have eternal life, then why do we still die? I guess that was a bullshit story, too. He lied about that one, too, huh? Yeah. So, when you worship Jesus, what are you worshiping? You're worshiping the dead. You're worshiping the ghost spell, huh? Because you're under the gospel. And the gospel is Christ. Crucified. Okay? Christ crucified and Yeshua are two different entities. Understand that. Know that, folks. Okay? Jesus Christ crucified was the grafted lie. He's the European blue-eyed white lie that was grafted in the book later, stolen. The Hebrew, G uh, Yeshua or Yahawashai. Okay? So, Jesus told that man he'd be with them that day in paradise, but Jesus went to hell. That means that he lied to that man. Jesus does a lot of contradictions in the Bible, folks. It's time to wake up. All praise and glory to the mighty most higher creator is one God. Blessings be to the children of Israel and all that serve the spiritual creator, the self-existing eternal one. He is one. Okay, he's not two, he's not three, and the Creator says he has no partners beside him. He says not to place partners beside him. Don't get caught anything outside the worship of one God is idol worship. Let me say it one last time. Anything outside the worship of one God is idol worship. It's placing gods beside the Supreme Spirit. The one that created the Watchers, the Gentiles, man. And then when you mix these, you started breeding vampires. Okay? These are people that consider themselves purple. Purple rain. They consider themselves royalty. Alright? These here are all in it together. Not the humans, but the Gentile here and those of the bloodline of Jepeth. Okay? Those that are in power. The Pope. Okay? Jepeth equals the Pope. Right now, in power, he is the physical head. To the invisible throne. Blasphemy. This is blasphemy. Uh, Pope is not a physical head to the invisible throne. He is on this plane of existence. 
But before the spiritual world, the Pope is going to burn for eternity. All right, folks, you have a good one. All praise and glory to the mighty most high. This is White Raptor News Ministries.